Hello, this is Mark, your medicine cork dork. Instead of going over a particular grape, I will be discussing uh, the event that turned the world of wine upside down. The Judgment of Paris in 1976. First thing that needs to be discussed is what American wine was like before the event. As some of you know, the American experiment of prohibition was a complete failure. And in many places, the laws were not enforced. The mafia also grew out of this era. Also, bootlegging and moonshine increased dramatically. Corruption was rampant. What's not talked about is how much of an impact this had on the wine industry. Obviously, many winemakers ditch the grapes to grow different produce. What most people don't know about wine is that grapes that are used have huge seeds and make terrible table grapes. So in order to earn a profit, the winemakers took the land they had and decided to go a different route. Fortunately, this prohibition experiment ended in 1933, yesterday being the unofficial holiday of the repeal. Unfortunately, it would take at least three decades for the American wine world to completely recover. It wasn't until the 1960s that America found a savior in one Robert Mondavi, whose wines you can still find on the shelf today. He was a leading American vineyard operator whose technical improvements and marketing strategies brought the worldwide recognition for the wines of Napa Valley and California. From an early period, Mondavi aggressively promoted labeling wines uh, varietally rather than generically, unlike the European counterparts. Today, the average American consumer is more concerned about the type of grape than the land on which it grows. Others in the industry also took note of this. California wines drew the attention of British wine merchant Stephen Spurrier. Spurrier orchestrated an event in Paris in 1976 in which French judges would blind taste test California wines against French wines. There were two categories, California Chardonnay against French Chardonnay from Burgundy and California Cabernet versus French Bordeaux blend. Now, there are a few things that you need to keep in mind. First off, blind taste testing was a relatively new thing at the time. Nowadays, we take this kind of thing for granted. Secondly, Spurrier chose wines from wineries that he felt were of good quality, despite the fact that he could have gone for bigger names. He knew Robert Mondavi on a personal level, for example. Lastly, it was generally assumed that a victory for American wines would be a top five rating. No one could have foreseen the fallout. The judges were asked to grade each wine out of 20 points. No specific grading framework was given, leaving the judges free to grade according to their own criteria. An overall ranking of the wines preferred by the jury was also established in averaging the sum of each judge's individual grades. The result was that one of, once all the scores came in, the French wine judges rated both a California Cab and a California Chardonnay as the best. The winning vineyards were Stag's Leap Cabernet and Chateau Montalena Chardonnay. Controversy, of course, immediately followed. One of the judges, Odette Kahn, who also rated Stag's Leap Cabernet as number one, was so furious at the result that she demanded her ballot to be returned to her. She also immediately criticized the whole event. Much later, Steve Spurrier admitted, quote, the results of a blind tasting cannot be predicted and will not even be reproduced the next day by the same panel tasting of the same wines, end quote. In fact, statisticians Orly Ashton Fowler and Richard E. Quant analyzed the results of all 11 judges instead of only nine and proposed a slightly different ranking. The stag's leap still coming out on top. They also stated that only the scores of the first two wines in their ranking were statistically valid and that the seven other wines could not be differentiated statistically. Don't touch your face. <laughs>
Sorry, I had to throw that in there. Um, however, the damage to the French-centric wine ego was done. Immediately after the event, American wines shot up in price. California, in particular, Napa Valley became a tourist destination. Wineries started popping up on the West Coast as well. And of course, the other winemakers were at this time already back in the game and going to be profiting soon. America was no longer the new kid on the block. We became a threat. Unfortunately, what also came about, at least what I assumed to be the result of this event, was that American wineries and wine lovers became very pretentious. I've talked to customers who have been to both Napa and Bordeaux, and the pretension in Napa is tangible, which, of course, is a shame. So... Here is a bottle of a wine from Stag's Leap. This is Stag's Leap Artemis. There we go. Not very good with uh, lighting and stuff like that, of course. But this is Artemis Cabernet. So it is not only the wrong vintage, but it is also not the winning uh, Cabernet of the event. That was the 1973 SLV which, interestingly enough, 1973 was the fourth year of their uh, establishment. Artemis will normally fetch you anywhere from $80 to $100. Fortunately for me, I got the wine for $42 plus tax from Biagi's due to the uh, coronavirus pandemic. This, by the way, is an incredibly good deal, and if you have a Biagi's in your area, you should consider... Uh, seriously consider picking up a bottle and opening it up on a very special occasion. I've obviously yet to determine that since I got it yesterday. Anyway, this is Mark, your Madison Cork Dork. Join me tomorrow at 3 o'clock when I revisit Aberino due to the uh, poor video quality and the epic failure that the uh, video quality was. Thank you for watching.